guys, my name's Mike. Welcome to my tiny home. This is Felicity Arnold, 15 tons of off-grid awesome. It's a 1990 BMY army truck. Hey, this is my Greenlee toolbox. I carry my generator, most of my tools on here. Um, Bolt cutters, axes, sledgehammers, the usual kind of stuff. Safe and secure. Uh, here's the exhaust for my diesel heater. Water blow off. Uh, I got a flex seal around the cab to the container. This is an 8.3 Cummins with 46,000 miles. I have crossed Canada coast to coast with this. So this lovely beast is 24 volts, mostly solar powered. Uh, I've upgraded all my lights to LED. I carry a vintage chainsaw, a Pioneer 28 made in Ontario. Uh, this thing's actually pretty badass for its age. Uh, around the side, I've got another toolbox which contains more tools. Always gonna have more tools. 80 gallons of fuel, doesn't last very long. Around the back, I've got another wood storage box. Which is already set up to hold a second spare tire if I take it off. Uh, these tires weigh 500 pounds each um, and hopefully I don't need to replace them anytime soon. Underneath, above the taillights, is my ladder, uh, which I store for when I'm stopped. Um, on the back of the rig, I've got a rear view camera that has night vision, uh, perimeter lighting, 360 degrees, all LED. So this, uh, this was actually a 40 foot shipping container that I cut in half. Uh, it was the cheapest way to go and it does fit the vehicle. On board, I carry a welder in case I damage it. Uh, so far, so good. On top of it, I do have four large solar panels at 1200 watts. Uh, it more than runs my welder, air conditioning, refrigeration, uh, and stereo needs. This is my home, come on in. Welcome to the driver's seat. Uh, from here, I've driven across Canada coast to coast. Uh, this is a 24 volt, mostly air powered operation. Um, originally, this truck was a troop carrier, so it was convertible. The windshield's folded down, although they still open out. So you have the option of driving with the windshields open. It's kind of nice in the summer. A uh, good way to catch fresh bug salad in your teeth. Um, it is a five speed Allison automatic. Uh, there wasn't many options for a standard. It has a high and low range on the transfer case. Uh, and again, full air brakes, so it's actually quite a beast to drive. Bumpers are fully pneumatic, and they're noisy. Looking on the dash, it's got the original number and specification plate. Uh, this is uh, so you know every fluid on the vehicle and how much it takes. This is the uh, second wood stove I've built for this truck. Uh, this will run 12 hours on hardwood. Um, it's a little unique in that it's a hydronic system. It will heat my coolant and my hot water at the same time. And if I drive the truck, it also heats my hot water. This is a home built system. Um, on the wall, I've got this beautiful seven gallon beer keg. Uh, it actually contains all of my drinkable hot water so the showers remain free. Uh, this is a thermal siphon system so no pumps to actually heat the hot water. Um, down below here I have a diesel heater, uh, one of these Chinese models, and I've actually fitted a liquid cooled exhaust to this as well, uh, further reclaiming heat um, for winter starts. Okay, so we'll go a little more in depth with this system. Uh, this, this reservoir here actually holds my engine's antifreeze. It's the tallest point so I can use that to bleed off, any air off that comes in the system. It flows down into what I call a sidearm heat exchanger, which is a pipe over a pipe. So I'm actually bringing coolant across my hot water pipe off the back of the stove. And when I drive the truck, the engine's water pump physically runs that water across and heats. So my uh, beer keg, which is full of water, actually is heated for free. Uh, it takes about an hour to heat up. 
uh, down on the back of the stove, uh, there's 16 feet of copper coil where the water raises up because heat rises and uh, that also loops and keeps my hot water hot. On the side of the stove here, there's a spiral coil and uh, it's 20 feet long and it's containing engine's antifreeze. And now I use a circulation pump to actually drive this back to the engine when the engine's not on. Sure, the only other room I have in here, my bathroom. Uh, I have a regular RV flush toilet, 40 gallon tank underneath, and I have a 30 by 30 shower heated by the uh, wood stove. Um, if you notice the faucets I use here are off of a laundry tub. I did those strictly for repairability. Um, if my taps decide to leak, I can put a new rubber fitting in them and they work again. Hey guys, welcome to my living space. Uh, I've got everything you need to live comfortably in here. Uh, I've got a fridge freezer, I got a microwave, I got an AC unit, all powered by my eight batteries. Uh, that's 650 amp hours of power uh, and powered off my 1200 watts of solar. I've got a nice bamboo counter. Uh, everything stays fairly organized because of this nice foam liner. And uh, it's nice when you park your vehicle and don't have a tumbleweed of stuff at the back of the drawer. Here's a little design idea for you guys. Uh, simply by using foam, little pieces, you can uh, keep all your cutlery and dishes in place. This is how it arrives when I park it, and it stays like that. So my upper cupboards are actually reclaimed from a pallet. Uh, it was a good idea. And a super simple way to keep them secure is by using a window latch. Pulling the bin out, and I've simply put a hole in the back, and there's a copper stub on the wall board, and it's more than enough keep this thing fixed. Cheap and easy solution. Originally when I built this truck, I had curtains covering up anything unfinished. I found this beautiful old window in a barn that was falling down in New Brunswick. It fits the hole, keeps everything where I want it to, and uh, keeps me a smooth operator. Hey guys, here's my ottoman. For all you Bulldog fans out there, his purpose is to get up on the bed simply. Easy peasy. And uh, this isn't the only Bulldog I have on board. Uh, thanks to some Chrome subscribers and some excessive uh, material, I was actually gifted this beautiful calendar. Whoever gave that, thank you very much. Well, thank you to my subscriber. I re-gifted it. So you might want to know what gets a guy to live in an army truck. Uh, I originally bought this to start a tour company and uh, this is going to be a rum bus for 20 people. Um, unfortunately, the insurance to actually carry 20 humans far outweighs the benefits of owning that company. Uh, so I decided van life was the way for me. I spent 2018 driving across Canada, coast to coast, and uh, it was one of the best years of my life. I fully recommend anybody to move into a tiny home. Uh, it's very liberating. Uh, it shows how efficient you can live. And uh, personally, I wouldn't go back to my old way. Well, uh, you know, to live in one of these, it took me a year to build it. It was a pretty simple build. Um, and the second I could move into it with a bed, even when the sink didn't work, I started saving almost $3,000 a month on heat, hydro and rent in the house I was in. Uh, it allowed me to take a, a lower paying job uh, to give me more time to finish the truck. And to date, I have less than $40,000 into my rig. Uh, I've lived in it for two and a half years and it's been quite affordable actually. My operating budget's around $500 a month. That's my cell phone and my insurance and my debt payment. And uh, it allows me to not have to work nearly as much. And I can enjoy the weather here in Vancouver all winter long. In the spring, I'll head back to the radium area and I'm actually going to finish a tiny home I'm building for a friend.
across the country in this, man. Big trucks always leave. And we'll probably hit these trees. See my hose. It's below us. Look how cute it looks. <laughs> That's awesome. This thing is so big. Can't ignore that it won't ever be the same 